Hello, I am Keisha Kirby. I am a teacher here at the CTC and I teach cosmetology. As we all know, it is Black History Month. And instead of doing the common things such as your inventors and people who created things that were new and inventive that we still use today that is important for the things that we do, I chose to do what we know and that's hair. The braids are very artsy, they're very creative. You got girls with long braids all the way to the floor, short, dreads, locks, all types of styles that we wear for protective styles. We wear them because that just what looks good. That's the style, that's the fad. It has even exploded so much to now it's in every color in the rainbow and some. How I know, cause I'm a color girl too. I love color, but most of all, you're gonna hear my students talk about the history of braids and how important they were. And now today, how they're just style, but they were very, very important. And that is the you are about to find out. Hello, my name is Kamaya Way, and this is my piece of art for Black History Month. And I'm gonna be showing you and also giving you a little knowledge because I didn't know myself that braiding came with a lot of hidden features and there's different meanings to each braid that each person wears. If you come closer, you can see that I put rice in between the braids. So slaves used to put rice in between their braids to be able to feed their families. Also, when they were overseas, because they didn't have much to eat when they was captive or different things. Also, if you see, you can see the weird, the weird structure of how the braid is. So each stretcher of different braids showed how, if they were married or you know they were single, didn't have a spouse, different things. And they also had different designs, which also shows that. They also wear their braids uh, around their neck because it gave them a little jewelry, a little taste, different things. Hi, I'm Jinta. I'm Okaya. I'm Marisol. And today we're gonna to be talking about the history of braids in corners for black history. It started with a king named Bengos Biombo, who was enslaved by the Portuguese in the 16th century. He, he escaped, and then once he escaped, he built a village where he taught a new language, made a new yeah, language, culture, and everything. And once from there, he decided that it would be better like, to be able to escape within um, the other slaves that were still there, he decided that women should do the escape through their hormone graves. So that was their way of getting to their freedom. And now I'm going to explain the hairstyle down here. Okay, I is. actually created this hairstyle today. And if you actually count how many rows they have, I have 13 rows and then two heels, I think. Oh, yeah, two heels. But on this, it basically shows the path they took to get to like the free land and they have to take exactly 13 turns to get where they need to be. This right here is actually like a river that they went up and then up into like a couple of hills. And then they took the rest of the turns and then this like here represents like the free land basically. And they're connected because they ran out of space and you can't lose two people. I'm Zakaya. I'm Emily. And today we're telling you about African American corporal braids. So basically, go ahead, go for it. So many African groups braided hair to identify their freedom, um, their tribes, and their, their power in the religion. Um, to achieve this style, they use grease or butter from their home if they didn't have many resources. Many, many African groups braided their hair to identify with their tribe. Braids in, indicated wealth, material status, power, and religion. Hi, my name's Amelia. My name is Brianna. And we're going to be talking about the zigzag cornrows that they used back in the day to help communicate with each other. So cornrows are a tra traditional style of braiding in which it is braided to the scalp, as you can see right here. We know them now as a fashionable hairstyle that typically women wear. There are different ways you can do the cornrows for your hair, for example, zigzag, um, hearts, or you can add beads, or you could just do them like straight down. Um, 
In many African tribes, braided hairstyles were very popular because it could determine someone's age, status, wealth, power, tribe they're in, and even the religion. Fast forward to the 1600s to the 1700s, cornrows would play a big part in helping millions of people escape slavery. And a lot of African Americans were forcibly taken from their native country to go to the South for free labor against their will. Since slaves didn't have any way to communicate with others, they had to get creative, which eventually led to their hair. Cornrows became very popular and important around this time that would, lead, would then lead them to freedom. They found a way to transfer and create escape routes by styling the cornrows in the path to leave the plantations, which only they knew. When millions of Africans were forced and fully taken to the continent for free labor, the Americans made slavery for, forced them to slave their heads for century. So African American women were able to use their hair as a way to escape slavery. They would do cornrows tightly to their scalp, as seen here. Um, the scalp was kind of representing the cornfields, and they would communicate in a way through their hair since they couldn't communicate obviously getting out of slavery to other people because they would get in a lot of trouble. So they used their hair in a way to signify um, the fields and try to get away from it. Hey, I'm Elena. And I'm Jennifer. Today we're going to be talking about the Fulani tribe braids. The Fulani tribe braids are originated in 3500 BC from the people in West Africa and the Sahel region. The hair is sometimes decorated with shells, beads, wooden and metal axes. Um, the Polani braids are distinguished from other braids by the braid in the middle and the long braids on the side. The beads can um, show someone if they're married, their religion, or their wealth, or social status. My name is Nancy and I want to talk about the tribes of Kanya. And this is jewelry worn by women and men. Uh, they are to understand their culture, uh, their social status, and are using different events and occasions. The main colors they use is red, stands for brave, bravery and unity. Yellow and orange symbolizes peace, grief, and health. And blue represents the energy of the sky. Green symbolizes health and land. Black represents the people and the struggles they must endure. My name is Milena. My name is Nisha. And I'm Elena. The Crown Act stands for creating a responsible, respectful, and open world to natural hair. In 2019, DASA was demanded to act protection against students wearing protective hairstyles without being discriminated. This began in 2012. DASA was intended to improve the culture of schools to create safe space learning without discrimination or bullying. This has forced schools to take the steps needed to eliminate the hostile environment. Since then, schools have given positive outcomes and good academic performances. Because research shows girls of color are more likely to get disciplined in school because of their hair, the Crown Act has been a beneficial change. This helps girls of color to express themselves and a way to better the classrooms or school's campus. Did you guys know, as big as Texas is, the Crown Law was only passed in Austin, Texas and Harris County. And if you notice the headpiece that I'm wearing today, it is from Kenya. Actually, my uncle went and visited Kenya about two or three weeks ago and he sent this back. You will see a picture and you'll see information about the tribes. They actually still wear these headpieces. This represents that they're married and it shows their status as to who they were and how they grew or even how the warriors were in their tribes. I hope you guys have enjoyed the presentation and learned that not only are braids are just intricate and can be in any style, any length, and any color, but how they were truly derived and how they worked and how they helped impart lives like they are today, where slaves were able to escape for their freedom, feed their families, and most of all, did you see about the Crown Act? Research and look up the Crown Act, how the Crown Act was able to allow people to exercise their culture, their rights, children and all, from adults to young to old, to be able to wear their hair as they desire, that do not stunt their personality, their growth, or anything. Thank you, and this is the month of Black history, and we represent the braids and the culture.